Hello folks, I've got one thing to say to you, prehistoric chess. So, this guy was pretty good at it, and this guy was also pretty good at it, but not as good. So, uh, let me explain. This is a Tron Shade chisel ended adds. It's about 12,000 years old, flat on the bottom and uh, the top is nice and flat and the sides are nice and steep and uh, he managed to obtain some pretty good control over that <coughs> this guy had the right idea he got that chisel end but um, he kind of got it bumpy on both sides it's all a bit on the wonk because it can be tricky to do now then I have a piece of flint that hasn't been hit yet and I want to make one of them but the trouble is I need to set the chisel up on the end for a build round it and that can be quite difficult to do particularly when you have a shape which has got no idea about what you might be intending to do with it so I'm going to uh, set up my leg pad and um, introduce you to the way I would approach this to get a chisel and build that tool. <coughs> Down in my earth lodge, enjoying myself. I'm going to be using a deer antler and I'm going to be using a few pebbles and a pair of spectacles so I can see what I'm doing now <coughs> I pretty much do know my way around a bit of stone but that ending is a difficult consideration so do I want to take it right out of the middle probably not I'd probably like to take a slab off, a big slab. So, this is a nice bit of flint, and I'm going to set something up so I can get a big piece off. I'm just looking at the best way to set it up. And I think it's right here. Right there. So in the back here, I'm going to hit that here. Knock a flake off underneath and then I'm going to try and cast this whole top out. Then we'll have a look at that. This stone has been sitting here waiting for me to approach it for um, a couple of months. See? Well, as you can see, there's couple of things going on inside there that I didn't have anything to do with which doesn't help me but there's a reasonable chance that if I hit it here we'll get what I'm looking for and it'll need a slightly bigger stone I've gone quite a lot bigger because I don't want it arguing back so that's the spot. There's a crack right above it that might try and have um, an influence over what I want, but we'll see. All right. So we've got a pretty big flake. I'm going to take another one, I think because that's so bent I don't really know whether I'm going to get what, I look, what I'm looking for from it so I'm going to rethink the whole thing and I'm going to come from this end and go under that lot OK, 
okay, we've got another decent flake off. Which is basically giving me a platform look. And I'm going to go in quite deep. So let's just have a look at, we're going to look back at what I want to make and the original. This is my piece of flint that I've just knocked off. Notice that. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay that on top of there first and ask ourselves, do we have, to, do we have the length? I had a go, but it didn't really work. I just lost all the size on it. So anyway, moving on. So we're running out of material in terms of taking big pieces off successfully. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and set the cleft up on the end of this and then just power away everything else that I don't need. It's a difficult manoeuvre, it always was. Right. So what we have from that is we have this long distance flat spot. All I need is a return come from the opposite side successfully. Not quite. Still not quite. That is close. See this cleft here? We could build a tool round that. But once again, I'm not still not completely satisfied, so. Because I'm thinking about what this tool has got to become. And um, it's basically, it's an ads. It's a carpentry tool. It's one of the first, it's one of the oldest carpentry tools in the world. Still not happy. I'm going to keep going until I damn well am happy. Now then, see that? Now I'm happy. You make it first. That is a powerful shape. Let's have a better look at that look. born to work so we've just got to build something around it without destroying it so the question to ask is can we see it's more important that I see than it is you can see but <laughs> I'll do I do my best at getting you in there right so what I have to decide is which which is going to be the top and which is going to be the bottom and uh, there's not a lot in it but I think I'm going to try and make this the bottom and that the top. So the bottom's going to be flatter. So I'm going to cast some strong flakes across the bottom and try and flatten that out. Good Stone Age vibe. We're in a cave, there's not much light, it's uh, partially raining, check out some of the quality of that. That's why I made the stone wait for me. Until I was in the right mood for it. Yeah, in other words, when I felt like I could do it justice. Okay, so, we've got a lot more width than what we need. So we can use that 
for our advantage. Just to set up the shape. And we've certainly got a lot more length than we need. And I want to cast these flakes off so we get that thickness and the depth. So these are quite short, shortish flakes I'm casting. I don't like that lump of chalk sitting in the middle here. So I'll try and get under that. Hey, we got under it. I'm going to start browsing around with a soft hammer a bit. Probably use um, a not too heavy one, really. Something like this. Now, a lot of these tools. They weren't thinking about the napping scars, they were thinking about the shape. So this is all for me about shape management, which will become a bit more apparent in a second. A flat bottom. And a beveled top. And a good working nose. A 12,000 year old tool. First carpentry tool. These people knew what they were doing and exactly what they wanted from this tool. They knew exactly because they were starting to make things. They, this is the first real um, evidence of man becoming um, what we describe as the tool maker. And you could say, well, that happened a long time before. But what contributes... People were making tools. But what's different about this is they're hafting. They're sticking materials together. They're sticking materials like, uh, well, they're, first of all, they're making glue, cordage. They're um, selecting the right woods in the right places. And they're combining all these things and making compli complicated um, tools that they wouldn't throw away once they'd finished, but would probably hang around with them as a possession. So in some respects, when you look at the way this is set in at the moment, it's not going too bad. It's too wide at the moment, much wider than I want it to be, and actually longer. And I don't normally say that, because um, we try and preserve the length of things. So short flakes mean that you're going to pull this edge in a little bit. Arrive in, and therefore your flakes arrive at the middle, but they don't steal from the middle. Because if you're always stealing from the middle, then you're going to get thinner. And then this particular tool as it was, um, it's the whole idea of it is slightly flawed. Because it's not strong enough. When you start using it, we just bust it in half. So I'm dropping some of that length out that I just don't need. And just for the record, let's have a look at what we're trying to make. You can see, this guy was really good at his job. He knew how to do it. These are the flat ones, 
so I can go in and steal a bit more from the middle on the underside. And keep bumping into areas that I haven't really controlled yet. So um, we can look a little bit on the haphazard side. But that's getting reasonably flat, wouldn't you say? And now what we're going to do is we're just going to narrow in these sides. So if we can find a slightly different soft hammer that hasn't got, isn't going to keep causing so much damage because it's too broad. We don't need any length. We're just reducing width. So I was trying to preserve a piece of that flint for maybe a dagger or something. That's why I went for the flake in the first place. But um, I don't suppose it matters. What does matter is we get this bit right. Now I'm managing to get the top nice and level, as this guy did. <coughs> Go level, he got that top. Perfect. I would say that he put quite a few hours into napping to really master that shape. Just still trimming them sides down so that um, it's not wider than the actual, too much wider than the actual branch it's going to sit on. It certainly doesn't want to be sharp on the edge, not around here because the bindings are going to be crossing over here and um, we're going to be needing to glue and bind this on and I believe what we have there if somebody showed me that I would say that's a Tron Shade Ads
So let me just show you what that looks like in its handle. So that's the one we've just made and that's what they end up looking like. The business, eh? The tool maker from the Mesolithic period. So cheers from my little earth lodge and uh, don't forget to subscribe and follow and um, then you'll get hopefully to uh, get notifications whenever I put more stuff out. This winter I intend, I intend to do plenty so cheers guys.